Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Winning Life broadcast, and I'm so excited to have you this morning. Today is the 21st day of May 2022. And I am not in the studio alone. I am so glad to announce to you that I am in the studio with one of my brothers um, who I've known for over 10 years now. And our relationship has blossomed. And uh, he is here. We're going to be discussing on something that is going to challenge you, something that is going to empower you to, you know, to build capacity. You know, a friend of mine will always say that the first city any man should build is capacity. He said the city is called Kappa. So I, I think I will get I think I will get an acronym for Kappa. So we understand what it really means. You have to yeah. build capacity. Very, very important. You have to live an intentional life, building capacity for excellence. Because you cannot achieve a lot of things without capacity. You cannot be excellent, you cannot succeed thoroughly without capacity all right now i would want to before i bring him on i would want to you know tell you about what we do here every saturday morning this is the winning life broadcast and i come to share with you value strategies and principles that will help you become extraordinarily powerful and successful in different endeavors now all your and all ramifications of your life so that's why we share things that relate to leadership personal development relationships and even politics and a lot of other areas that concerns your life, even finances. Okay, so next month, our focus is going to be on relationship and marriage. And, you know, the speakers who are coming here, is, they, are, they are powerful. So it's just that, that's just to, you know, uh, to whet your appetite in expect, in expect, uh, in, uh, to be expectant of, you know, the power pack um, activities and, and, and sessions we have next month. But before that, it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Prince Nabi here. Um, nice. He's the president of the Creative World um, Community. And, you know, anybody who I bring on this show, I bring them because I tested their capacity, I bring them because I have known, I know what they can do, what they have achieved, what they can do. I know their capacity and their um, strength in delivery. So I want you to pay attention to him. I'm going to be here standing by to also listen and make some notes. And then in the next 20 minutes to um, 30 minutes, he's going to be speaking to us. And then I come back for us to have an interactive section. It's going to be an awesome one. And please don't go nowhere. Welcome on board. This is the Winning Live broadcast, and today is the 21st day of May 2022. Glad to welcome you. Over to you, Mr. Prince. All right. Good morning, Sir Solomon, and good morning to our wonderful viewers. Thank you so much, Mr. Solomon, for having me on your platform this morning. It's a privilege, and I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Um, my name is Prince. Um, um, permit me to mute my notification. All right. So, um, my name is Bruce Chima. You have already mentioned a few things about me. So, I'm going to go straight to talk about building capacity for excellence. But first of all, when we hear the word capacity, what is capacity? What comes to our mind? Okay. Um, according to our English dictionaries, we can say that capacity is the ability to contain. When we talk about capacity, we talk about the ability to contain, the ability to perform, the ability to carry. So when, when you say that something has the capacity to do this, it means that it has the ability to perform that. It has the, it has the, um, it, it has the ability to contain what you are loading it with. Just like um, um, trailer, and then uh, when you talk about trailer, when you talk about um, a pickup motor, you cannot put the same thing. You cannot load the same um, quantity of um, goods on this on the boat. They don't have the same capacity. So a trailer have more capacity to carry more load, while a pickup has less capacity to carry that. So when we hear the word capacity. We are talking about the ability to carry, the ability to perform, and the ability to to contain. So, what what um, is when we when we hear the word excellence, what does it mean? 
Now, excellence means outstanding. The word excellence means outstanding. It means extremely good, to be extremely good. And then uh, when we hear the word excellence, we talk about the best of you. When we hear the word excellence, we talk about greatness. So these are the few synonyms of um, excellence, greatness, the best of you, extremely good, and being outstanding. So that's the, that's the two major words that is captured in our, in our topic, building capacity for excellence. Okay, um, so in other words, excellence is who you are ideally. Excellence is what, who you are ideally because it, it talks about the best of you. It talks about the best of you. Um, excellence is not, is not who you want to be. <laughs> Let me use that. I will explain. Excellence is not who you want to be. Excellence is not where you want to get to. Excellence is who you are. Excellence is who you are. Okay. Um, just like in engineering, before a house is built, there must be a design that will contain everything that that house will have. Now, there is already a design. So, ideally, the house is already there. Ideally. The house is already there. Now, what we wait for is the realizing of that house. That's the manifestation of what we see. That's what we wait for. The realizing. So, that is why you can look at that. Maybe, um, for example, those of us who are into engineering, if you go to sites and then um, you, you see that an engineer is moving around, surveying the house, so maybe when there is a mistake, you say, no, no, no. You guys didn't do this well. You guys didn't do this um, place well. Why is that so? Because they are following a pattern, which is what from the design, which is from the design. So there is already a design. The house is already there. That's the ideal house. Now, but we definitely know that an ideal thing can, may not be the reality. An idea team may not be the reality. So when we talk about excellence, it's about who you are, who you are ideally. So when you are not excelling, it means that's your reality, but that's not who you are. That's not who you are. So I'm, I'll take my time to explain this. So I, I was just talking about building. So what happens is that we model our buildings according to the design. We model our beauties according to the design. So the same in life, we are ideally made. We are ideally made. Now, have you ever made the statement, maybe when you did something wrong and you're like, no, this is not me. Have you, make, have you ever made that statement? Like you are doing something or in, maybe you made a mistake or you didn't do something well and you are like, no, this is not me. This is not me. So why 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 do you say so? That is because that's not who you are. That's not who you are. That's why you 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 open your mouth and say, no, this is not me. Because that's not who you are. So I want to first make us understand what excellence it is. What excellence is. So it is not it's not something we we want to or something abstract, or something we are looking at that is somewhere far. No. This is who, you, who we are. I'll show us from the scripture. In Genesis 1.26, I'll be making references to scriptures a lot. In Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. And all of us know that God is excellent. God is excellent. So if God made us in his image, it means that we too are excellent. Remember, he said that af after his creature, he, he looked at everything great and said everything is good. So that means if God created us in, in his image and he's excellent, he's, 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 um, he's seen as an excellent God, not just seen, he's an excellent God. So that means we too are excellent. So that's our that's our ideal identity. That's who we are. That's our identity. Excellence. So it's not it's not 
I'm laying this foundation so that we can understand what excellence is all about. It's not just what we usually hear. Now, in in Psalms chapter 16, verse 3, it says, As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones. This is David speaking in Psalm 16, 3. He says, As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. So God calls us excellent because we are excellent. So for the saints who are on the earth, we are excellent. We are excellent then. But the question is, why is it that we are not manifesting excellence? So we will we'll still get to that. But I want to point out another scripture. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, by, by, his power, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by, by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. This is Apostle, and this is Apostle Peter and speaking. So God called us by his glory and excellence. So it's a core. Excellence is also a core. First of all, excellence is our ideal identity. Excellence is a calling. Excellence is a calling. So when you are not when you are not living excellence, it means that you have not answered the call. It means that you are, you are living beyond expectation. You are living beyond who you are. You are living be, beyond who you are. Okay, now, so this is our idea identity. Excellence is not a competition. Understand this. Excellence is not a competition. You are not competing with anybody. You are not competing. and You, you are not trying to be better than someone. You know, in life, the moment you go into competition, you, you go into strife, you go into envy, you go into anxiety, you go into depression, you are you are open to all sort of attack. Because why? You, you are in competition with someone. In life, you don't compete. You only complement. So, the pursuit for excellence is not competition. You are not competing with anybody. You are not trying to, to outshine someone. You are not you are not trying to be out to outstand someone to assign someone to be to be higher than someone is who you are. Excellent. You are excellent, but we can live beyond expectation. We'll still get to that. So excellence is what you trying to be your real self. You trying to be your ideal self because that's who you are. So that, that's what it means to pursue excellence. To be your real self. To be your ideal self. So it is a calling. It is a calling. It's not a competition at all. It's not a competition. You don't compete with people. You don't compete with people. That's why in, in Nigeria today, we are having a lot of people who are committing suicide. You know, um, people have equated success to material things. Excellence is not about material things. Excellence is not about how much you have. Excellence is not about money. Excellence is not about money. You can have all the money. You can you can have all the money on earth, and yet you are not excellent. Remember, excellence is a calling from God. Excellence is spiritual. Excellence is spiritual. So you can have all the money, and you are not excelling. You can have all the money. Um, I I watched uh, an an interview. Um, someone, a journalist was uh, interviewing um, Elon Musk, the, the um, proposed richest man on earth presently. And then um, the journalist asked him, a record, the record shows that you are the richest man on earth. What do you have to say about that? I looked at him and said, um, well, um, Joe Biden, that is the president of the United States, may be richer than him. And journalists were like, why do you say so? He told him, you are not rich until you can control a legion. Now, why did I cite this um, statement? To make us understand that excellence is not about the money. Excellence is not about the money. Anyway, that's not the main thing I want to go into this money. So, so why then are we living beyond excellence? Why then are we not living in that pace? 
First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 says something. Um, this is Apostle Paul speaking. Say, but as we we are proved by God that the gospel should be committed to us, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who proveth our heart. Now I, I let me read it again. Say, but as we we are approved by God that the gospel should be committed to us. So that means before Apostle Paul could start preaching. He needed to be approved by God so that he can be entrusted. Under, under translation, we say entrusted so that the gospel can be committed into his hand. So now, God will not give you what, what you should have until you are approved to be able to, to, be able to manage it. Now, before you can before you can assess 100 million error you you have to be tested now before okay let me just bring it to the corporate world before a company gives you the 100 million error to hold they must have tested you with 1 million they must have tested you with 1 million now the reason why many of us are not excelling is because we cannot be trusted. We, we are not yet approved. God cannot, God cannot give you some things the way you are now. God cannot give you some things the way you are now. So when we talk about building capacity for excellence, is that we, we, are, talking about, we are talking about coming to that stage in life where God can entrust these things to you. Where God can entrust money, finance, economy to you. When where God can ent entrust people into your hands to lead. So if you are not yet approved, you cannot you cannot live excellently. So in other words, there is a process. Remember before, if someone who um, the Apple company before they brought out the their latest iPhone. Before they brought out their latest iPhone, after the manufacturing, they they took that iPhone through a lot of processes, through a lot of testing, through a lot of prunings, to for them to approve that iPhone and say, okay, this one can serve. This one is trusted. So, it, see, mo, there are some phones that have been manufactured which are which are not a market because it was not approved. So before any before you see a product in market, it has been approved, and before it gets approved, it must have gone through process. So in other words, the the criteria to excel, to live, to live to the standard of who you are, is to pass through process. The passing through the the process of building, building. So as you are going through all those things, you are building capacity for excellence. I'll talk about. How how we build capacity now in Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Where I am, um, what I am saying is, is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the OS. So you can have you can have everything and you are not having it. <laughs> you can have everything, you can be the owner, you can do you can be the rightful owner of everything, and you are not having it. Why? Because you are still a child, you are still a child. Can you can can you go and live in an uncompleted building? Why why is that so? Even though there is a design, even though you have the picture of that house in your in your mind, you cannot live there. It's not yet completed. It's not yet completed. So that's how it is. You cannot live excellently until you build up to that level of living excellently. Though that's who you are. I don't know. I think I, I need to slow down a bit. I'm running too fast. But I want us to understand these things. Now, have you, have, if, if, you, if you give birth to a child today, if you give birth to a child today, and that child begins to speak immediately, begins to speak, begins to walk, begins to play, how, how, how will you respond? It's strange. It's very, very strange because it's not, uh, it's not expected of that child to start doing those things. Though that's what he's supposed to do. The child is supposed to... A woman, 
a woman is supposed to work, a woman is supposed to speak, a woman is supposed to play, another woman is supposed to supposed to do whatever he wants. But as a child, so, someone you just gave birth to today and tomorrow the, the baby is speaking. It's strange. Now, what if after two, three, four, five years, the child is not able to speak? The child is not able to walk. The child is, is not able to think. Is another is another strange um phenomenon because why is expected of him to start speaking. So that's how it is in our life. So a lot of people want to jump through the process. A lot of people want to arrive at that top. A lot of people want to get to that top. It see if you if you don't climb bump, if you jump up, you fall down. If you jump up, you definitely come down. But if you take your time to climb through the staircase, it's it is only maybe when you intentionally fall, something happens to you that you fall. So building capacity is is important for us to excel. So no matter how you love the design, you wait until that house is finished. So if if you want to be at the top, you must prepare for the top. You don't just appear at the top. If you want to be at the top, you want to prepare for the top. You can appear at the top today and tomorrow you disappear. I, I have seen a lot of people who have disappeared from from the face of from the face of excellence. A lot of people who have appeared at the top and disappeared because why they did not prepare for the top. You must prepare for the top. You must prepare for the top. Okay, one of my favorite quotes is building capacity is a necessity for for, um, for for popularity and sustainability. So if you want to be popular, there is possibility you can be popular and you cannot sustain that popularity. So the the criteria, the necessity for you to be popular and sustain it is building capacity. So I repeat again. Capacity is a necessity for popularity and sustainability. Now, a lot of us are too much involved in activities. A lot of us are too much involved in activities. You must learn to minimize activity and build capacity. Do not appear too fast. Do not appear too fast. If you want to be excellent, go and hide. Build. You don't rush life. You don't rush life. Now, let me give another example for us to understand this. Let's take, for instance, a balloon and an aircraft. If you blow a balloon and release it into the space, it, it will be going up. But do you know that it cannot, it, it only have a limit. It cannot go far towards the sun. Because what? It will blow off. Now, sun is seen as, as um, the top, like, at that top, that place is hot. <laughs> let me let me let, let, let us know that you know when, when people talk about the top top. The truth of the matter is that the top is hot. So. The top is hot. So it takes it takes capacity to be able to make, to stay at that top. So let me go go back to my scenario. So when you release when we release the balloon into the atmosphere, once it gets once it gets to a point, it will burst because the sun is too much. Now, but when an aircraft moves up, it can go a bit far. Why? Why is that so? Now, the balloon does not have the capacity to go far, but the aircraft has the capacity to go far. So the mm -hmm. aircraft have the capacity to, to withstand the heat of the sun. That's why even in aircraft, it will be chilled. But a balloon cannot do that. A balloon cannot do that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are understanding me. So let's, let's talk about let's talk about um whiz and trees. One of my mentors we always also, we always say this that the reason why weeds grow very fast and wide is because they don't deepen their roots. So they just grow fast. They grow very fast and then wide. They, they don't have deep roots. And that's why you can easily go to your farmland or anywhere. And with your hand, you can easily uproot a weed. You can easily uproot all those weeds. But you, you, you cannot do that to a tree. A tree first deepens its roots. First deepens its roots before it grows up. 
it first depends its root before it grows up and it begins to bear fruit. Weeds does not bear fruit. Trees bear fruit. Now, you cannot uproot tree like that. You, can, you, you cannot just go and use a hand and uproot a tree. You must, if you want to uproot a tree, you dig it. You dig it out. So, that's how a lot of us are. So, when our foundation is not strong, we can easily be uprooted from the top. When our foundation is not strong, a little, a, a, a little wind can blow us out. A little wind can blow us out. So let me talk about another person, another person, Apostle Paul. Most of us Christians are, we know Apostle Paul. Do you know that after the conversion of Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, it took Apostle Paul 14 good years, 14 good years to prepare for the assignments God gave him. Apostle Paul went to learn. He, he was learning for 14 good years. Go and, go and check your scriptures. He learned for 14 good years. 14 good years. So what was he doing within that 14 good years? He was building capacity. That's why Apostle Paul could write, could write almost half of the New Testament. Even Apostle Peter at the time said, said that these things Apostle Paul teach are deep to understand. Apostle Peter, who spent time with Jesus, is saying this about Apostle Paul, who did not see Jesus' life. So, Apostle Paul took time to build capacity. He took time to learn. He took time to learn. He took time to deepen his that, That's why Apostle Paul authors mysteries. If you go and study all the books of Apostle Paul, especially Hebrew, Hebrew is too, is too, is too deep to understand. If you don't have if if you don't have understanding, you, you you may not be able to understand the book of Hebrews. Because why? Apostle Paul studied. He was one that said study to show yourself approved. So Apostle Paul took time to build capacity. To build capacity. So if you want to, if you want to sustain a life, if you want to be outstanding, if you want to excel, you must take time to build capacity for that. So another person is Jesus. A place in the Bible told us that Jesus grew in stature and wisdom. Do you know that when Jesus came on earth, he knew why he came on earth. He knew his assignment. At the time, a scroll was handed over to him, the scroll of prophet, and, his, and he saw where it is written. It is, the, spirit of, uh, the spirit of God is upon me and anointed me to do this and do this, to do this and do that. So he was aware of the assignment. He came here on earth, but he had to learn. He had to learn. He had to build capacity. He had to learn to, to be able to fulfill that assignment. So if you don't build capacity, you may not be able to fulfill that mandate you have. You may not, you, you may not be able to build that business to the, to the point where it can be seen as a world-class business. So is it, is it about David, King David, who was in the bush? The, the reason why David could could um, defeat Goliath was because he has been in the bush. He has been doing the job in the bush, learning, learning how to attack, learning skills on how to fight, learning skills on how to fight. So David was busy building his portfolio in the bush. It was one of his criteria to be approved because at the time when, when he approached King Saul to fight Goliath, they were looking at him at this, as a small boy. So he presented his CV. His CV was that he has killed a bear, he has killed a lion. So that was his CV. So that, that was so that was what approved him to be able to fight Goliath. So your CV is your capacity. So what are you doing? How do you build capacity? How do you build your capacity? I'm, I'm watching my time. Each level of your life requires a certain capacity for it. I repeat again. Each level of your life requires a certain capacity for it. You cannot use the same capacity for speaking to five for speaking to 50, um, 50 people, 50 audience to speak to 5,000 audience. Now, if a public speaker you cannot use the capacity you have built in speaking to 50 audience to speak to 5,000 audience. No. The capacity are not the same. So if you have built capacity to speak to 50 audience and you want to start speaking to 5,000 audience, you must build another capacity to be able to speak to 5,000 audience. I don't know 
if you are understanding, at each level of your life, there is a certain capacity needed for it. There is a certain capacity needed for it. If you are building a house, you cannot use the same capacity of foundation you used to build one story building to build story building. You cannot use it to build three story building, nor four story building. You cannot use it to build a, a skyscraper. That's why we're having a lot of buildings that are falling today. Because why? The foundation, the, the capacity of the foundation cannot carry it. So each level of your life requires a certain capacity for it. That means it is a continuous thing. You don't just you you don't just after after learning for a period of time you have said you have arrived. No, you keep on learning. You keep on building. You keep on building. If you notice a tree, if you notice a tree, um, its roots keeps spreading. Its roots does does not just stop. It keeps spreading. That's why when you're putting a tree, you you, you can trace that uh, one of the roots reached a a certain um covered a certain meter. So you keep on building. Each level of your life requires a certain capacity for it. So, your capacity to manage 500,000 Naira cannot be the same capacity you use to manage 500 million. Are you getting me? That you can manage 500,000 Naira does not mean you can manage 500 million. You need to build capacity to manage 500 million. Remember, we... I, I said initially uh, at my start of that essence is who we are. So what we do is we continue to become best of ourselves. We continue to become best of ourselves. We keep on growing. We keep on growing. While we deepen our roots, we keep on growing. So we are becoming best of ourselves because that's who we are. Bible said, be perfect for I am perfect. Be perfect. It's not we are we walk towards perfection because that's our uh, our ideal identity we work towards perfection so each level of your life requires so as a leader your capacity to lead 20 followers can't serve 2 million followers if you are having 20 if you are having 20 if you are having 20 um, team members you cannot use the same capacity to have 2 million team members you can't so you keep building capacity just just as seen in second peter chapter one we, we um we read it before second peter chapter one if, if you read from verse five to eight he's talking about adding keep adding said to your to your faith add add um good good character to your good character add knowledge to your knowledge add self-control to your self-control add this add this add this so you keep on what adding you keep on adding to measure up you keep on adding just 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 like uh, just like in in building house you keep on you keep on adding blocks you keep on adding blocks you keep on adding blocks um, you can um, you can I, I, are we understanding yeah so yeah. so note that when you are not excelling you are living beyond god's expectation so god derives glory when we excel god de derives glory in our excellence God derives glory in our excellence. Now, let me point out this important um, this statement um, point. You can be building to impress instead of building to excel. I say it again. You can be building to impress instead of building to excel. I usually tell people, you don't need to come on social media and, and be posting how you, how, how you read 20 books in one day. You don't need to come to social media and begin to uh, and begin to post your how you went to the mountain to pray. You don't need to come to social media. You begin to no no no. The the process of your capacity is a hidden process. It's not to be seen by people. So if it is seen by people, if 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 David was was killing uh, was killing bears and um, lion in the public, we we might not see that as a process of training. No, you train behind the scene so a lot of people are building capacity to impress they are building capacity to impress that's what that's why a lot of people go into depression today because by the time that they're seeing what people are posting you know social media have made fake life so magnified social media have made fake life so magnified so 
your process of building is for yourself and can as well be for your coaches, for your mentors and your close friends who are part of your building, not just people. So don't build to impress, build to excel. Build to excel. So I'll, I'll, I'll round up with these four things. There are four elements we must pay attention when building capacity. Four elements we must pay attention when building capacity. Number one is spiritual capacity. Spiritual capacity. Work on your core values. Work on your core values. What are your core values? Develop it. What are your core values? Develop it. Remember, I, I, if, if not of time, I, I would have read Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 8 to you. Please, um, in, your, in your time, please make sure you read it. Second Peter chapter um, one from verse five. It was talking about add, add to your, add to your, and to your faith. Add this to your, to, to this. Add this. Now, all those things are you can be categorized in these four elements I've mentioned now. So, spiritual capacity. What are your core values? How, how long do you spend time with God? Because excelling is about God. It's not just about the world. Is 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 not a world thing. Is about God because it's a call to glory. It's a call to glory. Now, do you spend time with God? Do you spend time with God? Excellence is spiritual. So you must pay attention to your spiritual capacity. Number two is intellectual capacity. Intellectual capacity. Your ability to think. Your ability to learn, plan, and execute. First Peter, second, second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 also said it. To your, to your faith. Add um, goodness to goodness. Add knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge is important. So intellectual capacity. How are you learning? You must learn it. You must keep learning. You must keep learning. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. just stop. You must keep learning. So your ability to think. You 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 you, you need to grow. You, you you need to grow your thinking faculty. Yeah. Your ability to learn. Your ability yeah. to plan. And your ability to execute. So that's the number two element. Number three element is physical capacity. Physical capacity. This deals with your health. A lot of us, a lot of us don't pay attention to our health. If you must excel, you must pay attention to your health. If you must excel, you must pay attention to your health. If you miss, if you miss, if you mismanage your health when leading five thousand people, do you think you can now lead one million people? If you mismanage your health, where when you're leading five thousand people, do you think you can now lead one million people? So you need to pay attention to your health. You need to pay attention to what you eat. You need to pay attention to what you eat. You need to pay attention to how you look. You need to pay attention to how you look. If you must excel, you must you you must look good. I I'm, I'm not telling you to to go and be buying luxurious clothes, but look good, look smart. Look good. Mm. You are dressed by the way you dress. Your the the first impression to your audience is your appearance. The first impression to your audience is your appearance. Okay. Then um number number three um, element is emotional capacity. Emotional capacity. This deals with how you react to challenges. How do you react to discouragement? If you like it or not, well, whether you like it or not, you will be discouraged. <laughs> People will discourage. Maybe you, you have not uh, experienced when someone boldly walk up to you and discourages you with what you are doing. Say, what what you are doing is useless. You are, I, I can I cannot see I cannot see you succeed in this thing. Like people will discourage you. People will will, will talk down on you. I, I have experienced it. Eh? Even my brother too here yeah, have experienced that. <laughs> people talk about people, people will discourage you. So uh, your ability to how you respond to that discouragement has to do with your emotional capacity. Now, how you mm. relate with people? How do you relate with people? How do you relate with people? So you need to grow in all this. You need to grow in all this. You need to grow in all this. If, if you want to come to the fullness of yourself. You need to pay attention to all this capacity. So, um, emotional capacity has to do with quality of your relationship as well. 
What kind of relationships do you have? How, how do you manage your relationship with people? How do you manage your relationship? How do you handle your appetites and desires? I say something in my in my post. I say that um, most times we want what we don't need. Most times we desire what we don't need. The the, the, the woman body, our, our, our system is wired in such a way to, to desire a lot of things that, that brings pleasure to the body, that brings, that, that brings pleasure to us. But your ability to handle your desires shows you are, you are growing. It's not, it's not at the time you, you are tasting for ice cream, you just go and buy ice cream. You'll be wasting money. Or, or like I, I, I see people most every every time they, they, they want to buy this latest iPhone, they want to do this, they want to do that. All those things are desires. If you cannot handle your desires, if, if you cannot manage your tastes, your desires, your wants, your appetites, if you cannot control it, that means you cannot be given the opportunity to lead a nation because your desires will, will, will make you ruin the nation. That's why we're having a lot of uh, a lot of reader, a lot of leaders who are who are rooting our money. So building capacity is a necessity to excel. Building capacity is a necessity to excel. You must build capacity to be able to excel. Build yourself, develop yourself, keep on learning, read books, develop yourself. It's important for you to excel. You must build capacity. For you to excel, you must build capacity. I'll stop here this morning because I, I don't want to take much, much of our time. So we can have, we can entertain your questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Solomon, for, for this time. I'll stop here. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This is full of, you know, what do I, how do I, how do I put it? This is packed. This is amazingly packed. My goodness. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Praise. And I've been here for this Thanks, awesome session. Like, I've, I've written, this is uh, page one, two, three, four. And I'm about to the fifth one, you know, from the value that you dished out. And I, I wasn't able to capture everything. Yeah, it's four pages already. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've touched a lot Thanks, of man. things. And then uh, we're going to just um have a little interaction interaction on those things that you touched and then uh, we'll, we'll be now in a round of quality day for today but before then i want to share this is part of what i'm going to be sharing with leaders who are going to be attending the leadership repair conference in july and um it's about the tripod of excellence you know excellence is standing on on, on three legs and then we have to look at it from this angle before we can be able to effectively achieve excellence and build the requisite, the prerequisite capacity to do great things, all right? Number one is knowledge. He has spoken about it when he was talking about intellectual capacity, knowledge. Now, if you even look at um, the scriptures, you know, if we want to take it from the scripture viewpoint, we will look at Daniel. The Bible says that he understood, he read, he understood by books. So, they, they were in captivity and their captivity has elapsed. The year they were supposed to spend there has elapsed. And he, there was no other way he could have known except by knowledge. Now, if you want to excel, if you want to operate in excellence, you must pay attention to knowledge. In fact, there is nothing you can achieve. There is no great things you can do without paying attention to knowledge, without not knowing. Some people said knowledge is, um, is, is knowing that makes you, that, that puts you um, above your contemporaries, they're knowing your yes. edge. Knowing some, it gives you an edge. Want, it gives you an edge. So it becomes yes. important. If you want to operate and build capacity for excellence, let me tell you the truth. You cannot even do that without knowledge. So what do you know? You cannot achieve more. You cannot progress more. You cannot do more. You cannot get any, you cannot get ahead without knowledge. So start pursuing knowledge. And then let me also put a caveat here because uh, uh, when we say start pursuing knowledge, some people want to go and pursue any kind of knowledge. There are yeah. things that you need to learn. I always say you don't need to learn everything. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to take all the courses. You don't need to 
go to all the conferences. You don't need to read all the books. You need just things that will help your life, advance them more, and become a better person. So you, you first have to discover yourself, and it still borders on knowledge. Self-discovery, very key. Because if you don't discover yourself, you're just going to be acquiring knowledge that will just get you more confused. There are some yes. knowledge that you will get, and then you become more confused than you were when you got them, all right? So it becomes important. I won't, uh, I won't be able to share all that about knowledge here and then even these three um, tripods, but we have to take it one step at a time. Knowledge is key. Um, um, my brother Pray said you have to go deep. You have to, if you, you're, not, you're not building to impress anybody. I, I, I even wrote about it yesterday on, on this one. I wrote about it. I said that your authenticity is what makes you a leader. If, I think that should be the last post. Okay, yeah. Maybe three posts I had before you started seeing the post about this this um, this webinar. Your authenticity. Some people live fake life because they want to impress. And the, the worst of it all is that most of the time, these people you want to impress are not even taking note of you. Like, they're not even concerned yeah like you're doing things to impress people but it's not their business that you're impressing them so what are you you're just killing yourself all right so it becomes important now the second that i i, I learned is that excellence is also, also stands on exposure excellence stands on exposure that's the second uh, the second part of the tripod a lot of people cannot achieve greatness. In fact, most of us cannot achieve greatness if we are not exposed mentally to greatness. We cannot achieve success if we are not exposed to success. So, on 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 the feet of of exposure, you know, most of the times I I do things that I do and improve on things I'm doing because I just maybe I went to an event and I'm looking at. The level of excellence. I, I, this thing can be done. I can, I can, I can inculcate this in one of the things I in my programs. I can, I can inculcate it in the things I do. I travel to maybe outside and maybe any part of the anywhere. I just look at things and say, "Wow, you know, there are places you will go in this world. You won't even know. Even in Nigeria, there are places you will go in Nigeria. You, you won't believe you are in Nigeria. In fact, you won't believe that places like that exist." So you have to start exposing yourself. You can expose yourself mentally. You can expose yourself physically. Go to events. Go to trainings. Attend. Pay. Go. Go out of Nigeria. Go out of Nigeria. Yeah. Go out of Enugu. Go out of Abuja. Go. Go and go to places. You know, it's very key. Now, the third part of that uh, tripod is spirituality. Even Daniel said. Even, than, even the book of Daniel, the, the Bible says that he had an excellent spirit. That means that there is a spirit that is an excellent spirit. If you don't have an excellent spirit, your efforts may just, you, you may put in more effort than even people who have excellent spirit. They, they, may, they may just do things and it, it's going seamlessly. I'm saying this guy is excelling. This guy is operating in high level of excellence. What is he doing? It's excellent spirit. Excellent yeah. spirit. So you cannot downplay the place of spirituality in building capacity for excellence. You cannot downplay the place of God, the G factor, in building capacity for excellence. You must, the Bible says, those who know their God shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploit. So you have to pay attention to that area if you want to build capacity for excellence. Thank you so much, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Chima. Praise for uh, that awesome um, section. I'm going to be bringing out some questions from... Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me even point out to some of the things you said. You said um, you must be approved if you want to live and operate in excellence. You must be approved. You know, to some people, that approval is called refining. Some people, yeah. ah. and you know, gold is not gold because it's it's it can be seen because it's everywhere. Gold is gold because. Uh, even when you saw it in its raw state, it looks like something that you wouldn't want to, you know, 
It looks like a stone, something you don't, you just, you don't just, it looks unattractive. But because of the refining, which is going through fire. <laughs> A lot of people don't understand this. That refining was that the gold will go through fire. Yeah. That was what made it approved. That was what, what makes it approved. And when you see it, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. People are dying. To, people are even killing people to get gold. Because of the value that has been placed on it through its refining process. And then, even in your time of being approved, you know, <clears throat> you, you said something about uh, David. David was in the bush. And God, and, and, and the servant of God now came to anoint him. There were prospectives. There were, there were, there were people who looked better than him, you know. Uh, they started yeah, yeah, yeah. With, they with the first son earlier. The man wanted to, you know, pour the oil because he was looking at the heart, at the, at the physical appearance. He wanted to pour the, oil, the hands, you know. <laughs> and, and he did it, and I think he went through all the sons. Yes, he went through all the sons of Jesse. Before they now remember that there is this one that is in the bush. Now, yes. that always tells me that whatever that is meant for you, God will always bring it to you. It is, even if yes. you are in the book, you will, you will make the other people to keep standing until you get there. <laughs> you will make the other people to keep standing. And that's, that's we, we are still talking about this being approved, you know. For gold to be gold, you don't see it everywhere. That is part of the criteria that makes it approved. If gold is everywhere, then it's just ordinary. You know, one of the things we wrote in our book, I, I was reading that book yesterday, Embracing Academic Excellence, is that if gold is just like every other thing, if gold is like clay, clay where you, you go see, you, you see anywhere, just dig the ground, you see clay. If gold is like that, people will just take it as that. But because of its scarcity, yes, because yeah. of its ability to keep itself away from everywhere. A lot of people want to be approved. They want to achieve excellence. But they yeah. are doing they are there everywhere. Everywhere yeah. you will see. If you see them in, in, in the midst of courtists, you will see them in the midst of prostitutes, you will see them in the church, you will see everywhere they go, everywhere. They go everywhere. <laughs> you cannot be approved by being everywhere. David was mm. in a place. David was, and it was that place that he got his CV. You know, you called it CV. You know, it was that place that he got his CV. He has killed a bear. He has killed a lion. And that gave him the momentum. That gave him the strength to get ready to kill a giant. A giant that all the armies of Israel, all of them were running away from. David got the moment just because he was in a place. So if we want to start building on excellence and building capacity for excellence, we have to build what I call the staying power. The uh, staying yeah. power. The staying power. The consistency to be at the place all the time. Or as long as God wants us to stay at that place. You can't be jumping from here to there, from here to there. From here. Nobody knows you. You're not doing anything significant because you're doing this and you're doing that. Tomorrow, tomorrow, your next tomorrow, you're doing that. So it becomes so um very important. So um, Mr. Praise, I would want you to um buttress more on um on the point when you said, "Do not appear too fast. Do not appear too fast." Um, a lot of people don't understand. You know, I, I know that some people would be, would be asking that question. What does it mean? They don't appear too fast. Is it not what we, we want? Is it not what we want for our success to be announced, for us to be, you know? But he's now here telling us not to appear too fast. Does it does it mean we should just keep hide the things we've achieved and not bring them out or something? So please, um, just a little um, light on that. It would be fine. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, when I when I say don't appear too fast, is don't be quick with life. 
don't be quick with life. I posted something around 1 a.m. I said, quick money disappears quickly. <laughs> quick mm. money disappears quickly. Yes, I posted. Mm. Now, um, you know, okay, let me come to the business uh, finance aspect. Um, uh, I, I, I'm into that I, I, area. That's my niche. Now, there are a lot of businesses now on the internet that promises quick money. Mm. Um, I'm doing one anyway. <laughs> Now, a lot of business online that promises quick money. You get into the business, within one month, within two months, you are, you are beginning to make six, seven figures. It's very possible. But I have closely on um I have close, closely on that um studied something. Now, a lot of people who go into that business, for example, um you might have a good business idea that mm. if you stay on and build on that, you know. I, 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 I say something that your children, your children will not, in, I'm talking about business now, your children will not inherit your marketing skill, but your mm. business can inherit a business, uh, your children can inherit a business you built, a company you built. So now, these businesses online that, that promises quick money, is your, your children cannot inherit it. Exactly. Your children cannot inherit it. Now, that, that businesses have have redirected the mind of people not to pay attention to maybe the business ideas they have had long ago. Mm. Now, mm. The, the the moment you you are, you are beginning to get quick quick money from those from those um um mon from, from those online businesses, you tend to forget that business that is in your mind. That that that, that business that you have envisioned, you, you tend to forget it. So you see that uh, a pros, uh, something has has um, gone something have missed because why we 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 want um, we want to get the quick money we mm. want to get quick money now it takes someone who is matured and who 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 is matured and um, is visionary to be able to as well pay attention to that um, business idea that company he or she wants to build so when you are when when you are building something your your mindset should not be the now now your mindset should be in the 10 years time in the 10 years time in the 20 years time what will this be so let me let me go back to the question he asked be appearing too fast appearing too fast now um you can be you can be you can be wasting time and thinking that you are you are waiting <laughs> As, let me say it again wow. you can be wasting time <laughs> and think you are waiting <laughs> so i i just ask you are you wasting time or are you waiting for time <laughs> so there is no the right time <laughs> Like unquote, there is not the right time. Now, what what um guarantees that you can now appear is your your growth, your capacity you have built. So someone can build capacity to appear immediately in one year. Another person may not be able to build a capacity in one year. So this thing is relative. This is relative. it depends on your 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 fastness in learning. Your fastness in learning. So appearing too fast is appearing unprepared. Let me just use that. Yeah. Appearing too fast is appearing unprepared. So you can uh, okay. In my training, when I train people on information marketing, I tell them, okay, you can you can take two, three months and learn a particular topic very, very extensively that you don't have knowledge about before. And learn very, very extensively and appear as an authority in that topic. You can do that. So, yeah. appearing too fast is yeah. appearing unprepared. Appearing unprepared. So, they are, then, on the other side you can you can you can stay too much long in preparing 
and you begin to overstay. Mm. Uh, you can stay so much long. In... You say so. That becomes a waste of time. You're not wasting time. Some people, because of lack of knowledge, because sorry, because of lack yes. of hurry, they don't want to yes. step out. They are preparing. We are yes. preparing. Preparing what? Yeah. So 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 you can stay long in preparing, and you begin to overstay. So how do you know when is a, is a time for you to appear? How do you know when mm -hmm. is time for you to appear? Now, first of all, you need to build confidence in what you are doing. You need to you need to have the a, the good circle of friends, the good is a good association. You need to have a coach. You need to have a mentor. You need to have a mentor. Now, to know when you when when you appear is not just okay. It's time for me to appear. Mm. Something calls you out. Exactly. So if mm. there was no glory out, maybe David won't have come out. Mm. I got him. So at that moment when Goliath appeared, that was when David came out. So yeah, go, 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 go. that is when he was Paris is needed. Yes. And, and it's so, also important, so, it's also important for us to be sensitive to when something is calling us out. Because a lot of people are being called out, but they don't know. A lot of people yes, are being yes. called out, but they think it's just um the child's play, even yes. with everything that they have in themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? So what you do is um now when you are building a house, as you are keep adding, as you are keep adding, that house is growing. So you don't just wait until you become perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't just wait till you become perfect. When you have done the basic work. You can begin mm. to show up when mm. you have gotten the basic criteria, the basic um, um, the basic criteria. Yes, mm. you can you can begin to show up. You can begin to show up. People begin to see you. So at that moment, you keep building, keep building. Okay, for example, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not so perfect when it comes to finance, but. People are beginning to see me as um, someone who is into finance. Exactly. But you, 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 you cannot compare me and then people like uh, my coach, Dr. Divine, or people like mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Casey Richard, or people like mm -hmm. people who are, people like uh, mm -hmm. Emmanuel mm -hmm. Alami. You cannot compare me with them. <laughs> but but I, I have I have I have gotten so much knowledge that if I if I if I still if I'm still waiting to be so perfect, my knowledge will be deteriorating. Mm. Let me let me quote something. Uh, one of my speakers said in a, in my in my concluded conference, he said, "One billion dollars and one million dollars under the sea are the same. Mm. One billion dollars and one million dollars under the sea are the same. Why? It cannot be used. No one can use it. It is there wasting. So." The value you have inside of you, what you have learned so far, the knowledge you have acquired, you it if it is not, if you don't bring it out, it, it will just be there. It cannot be used. Mm. So you don't you 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 don't need to stay so much long. The world is fast. The time is fast going. So you don't need. So the moment you meet up to a certain criteria the, the 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 moment you can tell yourself okay i can be able to do this and be able, i can be able to do that you begin to try as much more so why you are doing it you are still building you are still building you like i said you keep on building so appearing too fast yeah. in life just means appearing unprepared so someone can prepare so, so someone can get prepared in three months someone can get prepared in five months someone can prepare in one year and they appear Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's beautiful. Um, just in recent time, I, I posted on my Facebook that it's better to appear, it's better not to appear at all than to appear unprepared. Okay. Unprepared. So and then I want to also in, in another light, it's better to appear prepared, even if it's one month that you got and you prepared that you used to prepare, than to wait for 12 months or two years or 10 years before appearing. Okay, so once you know that there is something calling you, hmm. 
And usually those things, when they, when they call you, it, it looks as if you're out of your consciousness. This is what you have in you. And there is, it looks magnetic. There is something called it for that. So it looks magnetic and then it, it, it attracts you. Once you know that something is attracting you to come and you know show yourself and show the things that you have, there is no need to start dragging back because once you start becoming a resistance to that magnetic force, it leaves you for you to you know go and prepare more as you think. Maybe you want to see you think you need 20 years to prepare. It leaves you. <laughs> but, but at that time, you must have missed an opportunity. So it becomes so yes. important to become sensitive to when we are being called to manifest yes. what we have. Very, very important. Thank you so much, Mr. Prison Nabi. Uh, we've, we've overshot our time. It was supposed to be one hour, but this is uh, um, up to six minutes uh, later yeah. than that. I want to sincerely thank you. It's been an amazing time. And then, um, of okay, course, um, I'm sorry, not I'm um, um, permit me to um, just say one word to round up. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'll, a f in a few minutes, in one minute, two minutes. Now, there's possibility someone can be building and be building wrongly. Mm. So there's possibility someone can be building and be building wrongly. That's why in engineering, you, you have site engineers, you have surveyors, people who monitor people who monitor what the builders are doing so that's why you need a coach in your life you need a mentor you you need a coach that can tell you what you are doing is wrong the way you are going about it is wrong no do it this way do it this way so you need guide because you can be building and building wrongly the moment you are building on your own only without a guide, without a coach without a mentor there's possibility you can build wrongly and when you start appearing that's mm. when it will it will show up. I, I just I just remember this as a let me point it out. Yes, and there is also possibility, you know, a lot of people say build in silence, build in silence. A lot of people will also be building in silence and then they're building rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's important that even when you want to build in silence, let there be an eye that is looking over that, even even if you don't want to bring it to the public. You know, have a mentor, have a coach. That that's beautiful. Thank you so much for drawing our attention to that. All right. So um we're going to be rounding off here, and then it's my pleasure to say thank you, um, Mr. President for being here. It's been an amazing, a robust discussion. And then I know that my audience they've gained a lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to be checking out. Let me see if we have um any comments online yet. So um we can respond to them if there are questions. Okay, I can see Mr. Casey Bailey saying, um, uh, what of the meaning of the acronym Kappa? <laughs> okay, you know, I said I was going to get an, make it an acronym. I think I wrote something. I said, um, consciously acquire, acquiring credibility for action. You know, ah, consciously wow. acquiring credibility for action. And then Kappa. I also said, uh, yeah, Kappa. Then when you, you 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 build it at a city, you know, and then I I also said this it could also be consistently acquiring, you know, is it that consciously or consistently acquire? In fact, let it be consciously and consistently acquiring credibility yeah. for action that you can be able to take action, do more, become more and better. All right, I don't know if you got that, Mr. Casey. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Prison I mean, for that awesome, you know, discussion. We want to say thank you. We appreciate you. And, um, thank you so much, sir. And that uh, we do not take your presence here for granted. Within uh, one minute, please, could you please tell us about your community, the Creative World community, and, of course, um, the book you, you recently publicized? <laughs> okay. Th thank you so much for that, opportunity. So, in, in Creative World community, is a community where where we we are building a community where we can um, unite young people who are who are in quest to to make wealth to make them understand the processes and then the stages on how to build a long lasting world how to build a long lasting world so in creative world community one one of the one of what one one of the arms we have there is Creative Works Institute. is a is an institute where we train 
like um, everything I've said now, where we train on finance, we train you on uh, financial intelligence, we train you on uh, wealth creation and management, we train you on business development, how you can how you can harness that business idea, how you can harness that business idea, build on it, then get a good business plan, and then all that. Then beyond that, we, we as well teach on um, digital skills. Like I have a training that will be starting on Monday on um, grow grow and manage your finance is that that's a caption of training grow and manage your finance it's starting on monday it's free it's free for anyone who wants to attend it's free then what we are doing there is to is to teach on on major skills that that is required to to excel in internet skills like um, copyright content creation we, we teach on um marketing there are, there are different types of marketing your um maybe you have your personal products or you are promoting for someone and all that so the training will be starting on monday so the book i publish is um it starts with printing money with C cp and cpp marketing yeah is 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 one of the business i do um cpa means um cost per action and why cpp means cost per purchase marketing so what does that mean um is what what you gain, what you earn when an action is taken, what you earn when a purchase is made. So you just, it's not simple. The book is free for anyone who wants it. You just have to um, partake in the, be, a, be part of the training and then you get the book for free. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much with that phrase. It's been a nice time with me and tell you have to say. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been here. It's been an awesome discussion. And then the most important thing I would always say on this slide is that so take note of your actual point. Because you have nothing of what you said on this process, and you have to not make notes. Okay. Then it's been a waste of time to come to you. Alright, so make sure that you take action on what you want. You have to put it back, you have to get up to focus, you have to back. Foundation. But if you want to know if you are this, you are not the first thing. If you want to do that. Thank you so much, everyone. And then, if you want to do that, I need to tell you more. I need to tell you more. I need to tell you more. What I need to tell you more. That way, the man is going to be able to tell you more. I need to tell you more. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much, sir.